Tell me everything you don't like about the Durston 10. You want everything? I want everything. Right now? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I think there's there's two things that really stick out to me. It's a single wall tent, so the moisture management is, in my opinion, not good. Everything gets wet, and it's just kind of impossible to be moving around in a small space without all that moisture that's sticking on that single wall tent to just get on top of everything. Get in your sleeping bag, get in your gear, and uh, the kind of me. The other thing is, if you're not on perfectly flat ground, it is almost impossible to get a good pitch. Oh. Okay. Did you notice that? Um, I, yeah, I guess my pitches are always so terrible that <laughs> probably doesn't matter. <laughs> But yeah, I, I you always have a poorly pitched tent. The guy lines are real short on it, so maybe that's why. Yeah. Do you need the guy lines? Do you use the guy lines as like this is how you get the tent? I feel like that's the other thing. Is like it's really hard to do the like just four stakes, and get it to like really, you know, what it says. Like, you need six stakes. You need six stakes. Yes. Otherwise, you can't use the doors. Otherwise, you can't use the doors. Do you use also <laughs> guy lines on top of that? No. No. I don't. Do you guy out the ends? Uh, sometimes. When I was on the Colorado Trail, I did it a bunch. But mostly because it was so wet that the sides would sag in. And I needed to pull those sides out to keep, you know, space that wasn't sopping wet. Oh, this is Eric Hansen, by the way. Oh, know. hello. And uh, he's driving us to the airport. Say hi, Emmett. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I would say... Um, I think the interior space of it, like the one person especially, yeah, is small. Like, I feel like it's, like, for the size of the footprint of the overall tent, yeah. I feel like the, the width of the inside is just lackluster. Like, I want it to be bigger. Like, I, I'm only using one vestibule, you know, I'm, I don't know. I just wish there was a way to, like, just, I wish there was a way to, like, figure out how to, like, if you're not going to use the other vestibule, is there a way to extend the interior of the tent into the other vestibule? That would be good, cool, right? Dang it. Yeah. Um, let me see. Yeah, so yeah. it takes up a large footprint area for a relatively small interior. It does, yeah, that is a fact. It's hard to just like nestle the tent into like a really narrow, small, yep. small little pitch thing. Yeah. Uh, anything else you don't like about it? Uh, it's really expensive. Oh, yeah, a fact. <laughs> Depending on which one you get, the pro yeah. is super expensive. But that's, I think that's just DCF. That is. Yeah. I don't yeah. think that's Dan's fault. But. Uh, no, I think it's Dan's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Your name is Dan. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Are you trying to be nice right now? Yeah, I'm trying to be nice right yeah. now. But it's it's just a... Just tap into your... Tap into my inner... Angry, inner, inner, inner angry. teenager. Um, Sorry to interrupt, but I actually have some pretty horrible news. Um, unfortunately, we had to let Emmett go. Um, we couldn't afford him anymore. Finances just weren't there, and we couldn't pay his salary. Um, that is also 100% not true, but it would be true if you don't click the sponsors for our videos. In all seriousness, in order to do what we do, you need to click our sponsors in our video because that gives us the ability to do what we do or we would absolutely not exist. Onyx is by far, Onyx Backcountry, is by far the biggest sponsor of this channel. The reason we're using Onyx as a sponsor for the channel is because I have been using Onyx for over three years as my go-to app to plan all of my hikes in the backcountry. They are the easiest to use and they are also super in-depth for you hardcore hikers and people that need to know some serious stuff about the backcountry. And if you click the link in the description below, you'll get 20% off and it also supports what we do here. Help us, if you've always wanted to help us, if you always wanted to be a part of what we're doing and be a part of this whole mission to get people outdoors, then please support our sponsors. Onyx, thank you for always being a great sponsor. And again, click the link in the description below for 20% off. I find the the floor of the tent, yeah. like how it's kind of like, like it's not rectangled, it's a, 
whatever that shape is. Quad. Wait. Yeah, uh, like where is the, it a rhombus? Is it a rhombus? Is that a rhombus? Ooh. Maybe it is a rhombus. I think it might be a rhombus. Yeah. I I find that. Or trapezoid. It's trapezoid. it's. Weird. I have to shove my gear, the doodads that I put in the tent up in that corner. Yeah. I wish. And it's just the design of the tent. It's it was straight across. The other thing that bothers me about the tent is that when you lay it out, like unless you can literally, like you've got to visualize where is my sleeping pad going to lay. Yeah. Because when you lay it out, all of a sudden, the tent becomes a different angle than the interior. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. you have to remember where the angle of the interior was as you're laying out the tent. To like, okay, where was that spot for my tent pad? You know what that I mean? That rock, that root, where? To like, where? Yes, it will lie yes, on the because the, the, yeah. the because then the tent, as you laid out, it becomes like deceiving. So that bothers me. Yeah. But I get why it's shaped that way because it. Anyway, but do you have to? So you have this rectangular outer, and then the inner is at an angle. Yeah. I find that I have to sleep at an additional angle inside that angled inner tent to maximize my own head space. Really? Yeah, because otherwise... You Is know, it because you have a big head? I, I do have an exceptionally large head. I think so. I think that might be what, what it is. It's pretty large. But because, you know, if you're in the corner of the tent, it really sags down quite low. There's like no, very little room. What are you talking about where you put your gear and stuff? Oh, yeah. Stash it up into the corners. Yeah. So yeah. I find that I have to kind of cock everything again at an odd angle. Uh-huh. Okay. So. So what are the things that you love about the Drift tent? It is the lightest tent I've ever used. Yeah. I mean, it is a super lightweight tent. Uh, I actually think it's really easy to set up. Other than like Very some of the saggy, saggy pitch kind of stuff where you have to tweak it a little bit to get like a nice taut pitch. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, just putting out the corners and yeah, popping it up. On a rainy, on if a, it's raining, you know, yeah. it makes it super easy. It, it is the first tent that I've truly used that is like, you know, like the, the fly first. Yeah. It's a single wall tent, but so that you pop it up and then if it is raining, this you is can this, just, this isn't your first regular wall tent, is it? Uh, it is. Really? It wow. is, well, in like a real way. Like, that I've gotten like real. Oh. Wow. So, yeah. Cause I, but I, I used the Durston tent. I used many, many nights last year. I used, I trekked the Tour de Mont Blanc with it. I did the Colorado Trail with it. Uh, the Grand Canyon with it with you. Uh, I got, I got a lot of nights in it. Yeah, I got quite a few nights in it too. Yeah. Yeah. I would say I love the ease of the setup sure yeah i like the headroom in it i think for a trekking pole tent it does a pretty good job for what it is for everything that like you can only cram so much into uh, that design i feel like he did a really good job of making it easy to set up you know really thought out you know geometry of how it all works where the tent poles go because when you sit up there is room oh i will say that one of the i don't like is that when you're there's that one side that always kind of comes down towards you by your face. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Well, that's why I have yeah. to uh, okay. cut, I see my, cut my mattress again yeah. into uh, yeah. the opposite corner. If so you're a really doesn't... tall, how tall are you? I'm like Five, three. seven foot three. <laughs> <laughs> six foot tall. You're six? Okay. Yeah, so... Five, eleven, and three quarters, fine. <laughs> On your tippy toes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, for, I'm 6'2", so yeah, I, I totally can see that. Yeah. For sure. Okay, if you... Um, what's the one thing you cannot leave home without? Let's let's forget about the Durston Temple. What's the one piece of gear, like if, if on every backpacking trip, this has to come with? If it doesn't come with, like, I'm just... I don't know what to do with myself. What is it? Could be anything. Anything. Is it a camera? Is it a... Well... Pillow. Is it a tent? That'd be helpful. <laughs> I do have a habit of bringing a tent with me. You do? You use a tent. I, generally speaking, I do. Um, no, I would say, well, one, because I also do YouTube, it's a camera, and I love photography. So, But that's kind of like, 
maybe kind of a boring answer for, for most people. Um, copper. Oh, yeah, watch out for the copper. 5-0, slow we're, down. He's going 25 over. <laughs> that would be, if we got pulled over on video, that'd be awesome. Can, <laughs> can you please go by again at this speed? Yeah. That'd be great for we, video. We need more trouble with so the police and the yeah. feds <laughs> to, yeah. to get into it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, aren't you the guy that should have camped in the right spot? <laughs> uh, yes. Um, let's see. I do bring a pillow on literally every camp yep, trip. Too. That is... Oh, look at the cop. He's crazy. Coppers everywhere. Can they speed without their lights on? Is that legal? Can cops just do that? Technically... Can we citizen arrest him right oh, now? Oh, let's do it. That guy's cruising. Let me put the siren on. <laughs> uh, I do bring a pillow on every camp out. Did, did you, do you call it a pillow? A pillow. Yeah. Okay. I'm from Arizona. That's why we can call it a pillow. It's a pillow. It's like what, what our main accent is. Okay. And I don't know. I am not the techiest backpacker. So... When I met you, I felt like, I feel like <clears throat> you had a lot of experience with all kinds of gear, but you weren't really like super into gear. Like you, I don't know, maybe. I would say it has been an evolution for me to get more, more and more excited about like the, the gear and the tech of backpack. Okay. Cause I, I mean, I was a, I, I grew up with like a very simple setup, just like a foam pad, crappy Coleman sleeping bag, like 45 degree. That's what rated, you were backpacking with? Rated sleeping bag that was terrible. Wow. Would just be like freezing all night. Wow. Uh, yeah. And sitting on the ground, never had a chair. Wow. Never really did that sort of thing. Uh, it wasn't until I met you that I started realizing that there's there's some fun things you can add in to make make your experience. Yeah, more fun. I'm, a, I'm a massive nerd. You are, massive. but you've made me better. Oh, Eric. Well, you tell me what your like gadget is, because maybe that'll actually trigger. Oh trigger man, the most thing, like if I had to, if I cannot, like if I leave without this, I'm just in big trouble. What would it be? That's a really tough question. I mean, with it can't be like. One of the big three, right? It's got to be something else because those are super obvious. Um, yeah, you can't say like sleeping bag. So, yeah, yeah, well, that's yeah, like those are things. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's a that's a really good question. Oh, I think this is gonna be so. Yeah, I, probably a battery bank yeah. because I I have to have things charged. Is that a dumb answer? No, I feel like that's a terrible. But answer. honestly, like I almost never bring a battery bank. Really? Like, it's rare for me to bring a battery Why bank. is that? Uh, mostly because I feel like I don't have one that I like. Yeah. I was like, dude, right? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we did just drive, like, out of the clouds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I never... Oh, well, I wouldn't say never. I almost never bring a battery bank. Yeah. Backpack. Okay. Uh, mostly because... I have old ones that aren't good, like, you don't get a lot of juice out of it, and they're heavy and clunky. Okay. Uh, and it's just not something that I've really prioritized having. Um, so, yeah. So, you don't charge a phone? You don't charge... I typically just go with one. camera batteries, or... I typically bring enough camera batteries to last me the whole trip, which usually means I'm bringing, like, nine or ten camera batteries and I usually just go off of one charge on my phone and just try to manage my one charge wow that's that's wild that that would be my one thing and you're like I don't even bring it like you, uh, what's wrong with you Dan yeah I don't bring a single I think I would go <laughs> I just make yeah, like a whatever. pipe off uh, yeah. sleeping sleeping yeah. pad I try to kill a few rabbits and I use their furs. <laughs> you, well, that's easy. That's easy. So you're like Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Sleeping yeah, I just in crawl the... inside the big 
furry snow animal. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they smelled bad on the outside. It can be tricky finding them in the desert, but you, know, you, yeah. know, you never know. But they're, they're sometimes out there. Yes, but it's pretty, pretty cool that you can do it every time. Yeah. Um, maybe I would say I do bring, I often bring like a grail water filter with me. Okay. So just like water filters in general, but are, it is, uh, that's you, something that I kind of do dabble with is trying different ones, but. Are you still the, uh, the grail guy? I would say more often than not, I am the grail guy. I, I have been using grail pretty consistently over the years. And actually I did a, a trip this summer where I backpacked the Colorado Trail or a good chunk of the Colorado Trail, brought a life straw with me and it was- Life, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. It was actually like my, the biggest pain in my was it. Why? It, well, part of it was my fault. I didn't bring us like a flushing a syringe and I, so I had a really hard time back flushing it and it got- Where were you getting? Colorado, okay. Colorado Trail. And it got gunked up on my first day. And it was such a pain to get, get clean water. Wow. It was a mission every time to just get drinking water. And I was really frustrated with it. Wow. Yeah, I had good experience with that filter. If it's the same one, it's the dark bag. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, the, the peak squeeze. Yeah, he everybody loves that filter, right? I mean, oh, which one? The Life Straw the Peak life Squeeze. Straw. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah. I, in general, I would say that I've had, I, I'm not trying to knock the, the thing because I, I have had good luck with it, except for that trip. And I had forgotten to bring the black, the back flushing syringe. And so I just like couldn't clean it out. Wow. It was just like stuck. But you're typically a grail, like that's your staple. I would say so, but I do a lot of like international stuff. And that's also where the grail really excels. Yeah. So just for like regular backpacking it is cluckier it is bigger and bulkier than most other filtration options yeah but have you tried the sawyer uh i have i've used various ones in the past mostly i just don't like the bag the sawyer bag oh i don't bring the sawyer bag yeah you I replace bring, it with like yeah the, something uh, else. the cock back dough oh yeah maybe you, you know what that is uh so yeah that that thing is, is it knock i always thought it was like i'm kind of pretty sure it's knock that's what i've been told yeah yes okay. so well, you know and put it in the comments i cannot pronounce that correctly <laughs> this is what i have to do yeah bad bad jokes uh is that why you didn't invite me either yes yeah. that was literally the reason if i have to listen to one more eric joke Wow. You didn't let me come back like the Great Canyon with you because yeah. you thought that I was going to bring the feds on you. Yeah. But you did have the audacity to be like, drive me to the airport. Yes. Yes. Take me to the airport. Yeah. That's all you get. Yeah. And I have to put up with two hours of this. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah. I I um, I use the Knock back door. I think that bag, the Knock, whatever it is, is genius because I don't have to bring all my filtration stuff to wherever I'm filtering. Like, I don't have to bring my bottle down there. I don't have to bring anything with me. All I gotta do is scoop the water and bring it back to wherever I was at, my yeah. tent, whatever. And then I don't even have to filter it right then. It's just in the bladder. I could filter, like the other night, uh, in the canyon, we, I just set it outside my tent in the bag and filtered it in the morning because I was too tired to filter at night. You know, and I filtered, just woke up, filtered water. Right. There's, but I didn't have to go down, you know what I mean? It's yeah. super convenient. So you use it like a big bladder? And yep. Filter it as you go. Yes, and then it's the one I've got. Is two liters. They sell different sizes, but you can. Um, it's pretty robust, so you could kind of strap it to the top of your tent, and you got to carry more water in the desert or wherever. It's an extra two liters of water. Okay. That's what it is. Okay. So it's been a while since I've actually really used the Sawyer, but you're telling me like I should give it another go. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I love it. I think. People, some people say it's got a flow, slow flow rate. Yeah. I think that's just their filters are, right, the vlog or something. I mean, I don't think it's slow. I mean, there's definitely faster filters. You got the Canada and V-Free, which is like turning on a fire hose. <laughs> but then that thing, it's it's good. But after like three, four trips, it, it's, it slows down. Yeah. And it's really 
cleaning it is kind of a joke because you're, you're supposed to like shake it. Yeah, and then it yeah, doesn't really. Yeah, it doesn't really do much. Yeah. So cleaning those kinds of filters is, I find, a pain in the butt, which is why I had such a big problem with the, the life straw on that trip. If it's a pain in your butt, maybe you're just sitting in a filter. <laughs> that's that's wasted. Check yourself. Yeah. What else are, are you, what are some of the other things that you, uh, what's, what's like some of your other favorite things that you've, uh, that, that you've been using? Your backpack probably, right? I think you love the Mystery Ranch one that's got like the bra. I do love that bra back there. I feel so supported. It's the bro. The bro. The bro. The man bro. The man bro. Yeah. Um, it is. Thro- I Emmett, mean, hashtag throw in Seinfeld reference. <laughs> you want me to wear a bra? No, no. A bra is for ladies. Meet the bro. <laughs> I do really like that backpack. It is the, because it's the most comfortable. I mean, it's just crazy how comfortable that backpack is but i do understand that it's a heavy backpack how much does it carry like weight wise when we did the grand canyon trip last year i carried 55 pounds across the grand canyon you had 55 pounds in your back your back 54. whoa at the moment we set off it was 54 pounds wow holy moly yeah so we had and i carried it comfortable we've been looking for a pack for Emmett, that he could carry all of his stuff and then carry camera gear, because uh, his his bags get pretty heavy. Yeah, so I typically carry about twelve pounds just in camera gear on any whatever I'm doing, which is why I have struggled in the past with like really lightweight, ultra light style backpacks. Is because yeah. it's just hard for me to get have a pack weight under twenty five pounds. Wow, is that including water fuel? That's everything. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I haven't weighed my backpack. I don't remember the last time I weighed my backpack before a trip. Yeah. I, I got to guess. I'm usually between... I With camera gear, I'm between 30 and 35 pounds, I would guess. Yeah. That's more normal to me. 30 to 35 with camera gear. You know, food and water. Um, but, yeah. Like, I can comfortably carry 50 pounds with the, the Bridger, which is why I love that pack. But I get that most people, especially your audience, they're just not here. No. Yeah. I think I think a lot of them do. Yeah, you because know, ultra, ultra light gear is so expensive. It is so expensive. And it's you know people are just like, I, I can't afford it. Therefore, I'm not using it. I'm just gonna. This is my backpack. Yeah. I, I put all my money into this backpack, so they just. Yeah. Yeah, I think like there's a good amount of people that, and they're smart for doing that, honestly. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, okay, but you love that backpack, though, the Mystery Ranch. I do. I do love that one. I have been trying their new lighter weight one, and it's been, it's been pretty cool. I do like it. It's, three, it's two, a full two pounds lighter. You oh. shaved two pounds off of there. Does like, it still have the bro? It doesn't. I wish it did. But it's other than that, it's a really... It's the, the Radix, and it's a really good, solid pack. And I know that this is just my ratty old sweatshirt. I've got a mystery sweatshirt. I'm not, I'm not an employee. This video is not sponsored by Mystery Ranch. Specifically not sponsored. <laughs> um, but, oh, you are a, you're a quilt user, right? Uh, for, yeah, probably 90% of my trips are quilt. I'll use a sleeping bag if I'm doing, like, serious winter camping. Okay. Yeah. And But... I do like a sleep, a good sleeping bag. Because I, that's one thing that I just, I have struggled to get on the quilt. Why? Bandwagon. Uh, I think it's really, I like the feeling of being cocooned. Okay. And I just don't get that same sensation of like coziness. Okay. With a quilt. I'm warm enough. It's not about being overall warm enough. It's just feeling... I would say. Okay. Uh, and I think part of it is just the the element of like not having a hood. 
to like really dive into. Just pull that hood up over. Because what are you like wearing a jacket or a ball? So or okay, so I just used um, this. But do, okay, Zen Bibby. Do you like the Zen Bibby? Yeah, but that that's like a quilt, but it's integrated with yes. the thing that makes it feel cozy. Do you use it still, or I do? Okay, I actually really like the Zen Bibby. What what's your go to? Uh, sleeping bag, whatever it is. Well, actually, it, it is the Zen Bibi. Okay. The the light bag. So you are a quilt user. But it's a quilt with a like. With a hug. With a hug. A quilt <laughs> with a hug. That could be their technique. <laughs> it's a quilt with a hug. I did also use the Nemo Riff a lot this year. Which one is that? Uh, the, kind of there's 15 degrees spoon oh. sleeping bag. Oh yeah, it's kind of wide. Yeah, it's, yeah, kind of, it's got like wide, wide hips and yeah. stuff like that. And you can, I actually really like that bag a lot. So between okay. like the two bags that I used a ton this year, got 50, 50 nights in, where the Riff and the San Vivi like that. Oh yeah, wow, yeah. I just used the. It's not out yet. It's not even released yet. It's just. They set samples to a bunch of YouTubers or whatever, but it's the uh, the Zen Bibi like the super rich light version. Yeah, it was really nice. It was really comfortable. Um, you use it? Yeah, I just use it in the Canyon. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's like there. I mean, there's with anything. There's always stuff to fight around with, but I mean, I'm excited to use that. Yeah, I I think you're gonna like it. I have. It's, in a box in my garage at the Oh, you got one? Yeah. I got one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you get the pad too? Yeah. Yeah. So the pad was really comfortable. The one thing about the pad that I noticed is that when you lay on it, though, your um, if it's not really inflated, it, you can't like, some people like to underinflate their pads a little bit. Yeah. You can't do that with it. I couldn't do that with that pad because my hips were getting the crown. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I don't know if it's the quilting or whatever. So I had to kind of make it nice and firm. Yeah. And then it was fine. It was just kind of too far away. And then the pillow was super nice. Yeah. Like, he's got this bladder inside of, like, this kind of, I don't know what it is. It's got to be, like, a nylon, sort of really nice feel nylon bag with, like, a, a down topper that you can put on top yeah. of the pillow. But then it was kind of warm in the canyon at night. It got maybe down to, like, upper 40s, low 50s one night. And it was, like, <laughs> my face was, like, sticking to it. You know <laughs> what right. I mean? Yeah, so I did a... I'm a two pillow guy, so I brought my other, my my thermal rest, and I just switched to that because that's cotton. Yeah, and it was like, that's really the only thing. So I I have really loved the ZBV system, but I haven't really gotten that excited about my pillows. So I use like the Sea to Summit Heroes down pillow. I've never used that. Everybody keeps telling me to use it, and that's like a, it's been around forever, hasn't it? It's an old, yeah, it's not a new piece of gear. Yeah, but it's got a really nice texture. I sleep with my face right on it. It's very like pleasant feeling. Nope. Wow. Tell me why. Yeah. Uh, okay. Speaking wow. of sleeping pads, mattresses. Have you used the new uh, Nemo, like Tensor Extreme? So I've used the Trail, the All Season. Yeah. And I just haven't been out on any winter trips this year to use the Extreme okay. yet. Yeah. And I look. I think they feel identical to the old school Nemo. Yeah. I don't feel like there's any comfort difference between them. Um. I don't know. Did you f- find them to be lighter or warmer or anything? Can you tell? I guess with the all season, it's not that different. Um. It's what like. Four eight instead of four three years. Yeah, like I don't remember the R value, but I think you're it's right. Something. It's something. something in the in the same ball. I feel like the all season is like that's if you're gonna buy one, buy that. Yeah. Because I mean, even if you're on snow, that's plenty. I four eight like, is. Yeah. I, that's what I like. You would be a year ago would have been excited to have that. Yeah. <laughs> but I did just use the the eight point five one. And for like. 20, 20 ounces or whatever it is, or it's. I think it's lighter than the, than the, the, the Thermarest um, X Therm. Oh, by a lot. 
Yeah, it's it's tiny. It's the so I just did a comparison between the the Tensor Extreme, the new one, the eight point five R value one. It weighs twenty five ounces. Yeah, at, for the wide wide rectangular, and the old Emo Tensor is twenty one ounces, but it's oh. four point three R value. Wow. So they only added a couple ounces and made it like double the warmth. Okay. And when that, uh, the Sea to Summit, uh, what was the, the extreme, Etherlight Extreme, yeah. is so bulky and way heavier. And I haven't been impressed with it. Oh, that one. I used it twice and I froze. Yeah. I remember you saying that. I did. Yeah. Cold spots like crazy. You know, yeah. Like this. What is up with this? Yeah. Yeah. But. Well, I was just comfy. down to negative five, and I uh, had the the tensor extreme. I was actually super impressed. I had no cold spots. And you were in the what bag were you in? I was also in a pretty extreme bag, but I was in the negative Sonic negative twenty. Oh Al- wow. Also Nemo. Okay. Yeah. But you were nice and warm. I was. Toasty, happy, wasn't shivering at all, slept well, completely comfortable. I'd never camped that cold. And the coldest I've ever camped is in like the single digits. Yeah. It just never gotten down that cold. Yeah. Come on in, Wes. No. Let's go. I find that camping, like winter camping, or just backpacking in general, for me, anything below 20 degrees is just like, at night, I'm, I kind of feel like, why am I doing this? <laughs> I don't know. There's just something about going below 20. And I, I, I do it. Yeah. But that, that below the 20 degree mark is just... It, but getting below 20 is often... It is, is often. Is not often at all. I feel like it very rarely ever happens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for most... I mean, you think of all the trips that... I think of all the trips that I go on throughout the year... I mean, maybe one gets below 20 degrees matter where I go what I do I mean if I'm it just I don't know I just feel like it's so like when I when I buy my gear I 20 degrees you're not like, buying it for the no. really cold stuff no I, I I try to get everything in uh, the comfort rating is 20 yeah I feel like I'm good for like 95% of my trips what's your go to 20 comfort rating sleeping system <clears throat> Um, the Outdoor Vitals Stormloft quilt yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah. I love that quality. Uh, that's my go-to. Yeah. The Zen Vivi was great. I might, uh, I might, you know, I might start using that a little bit more. It was really cozy. A little bulky for everything that you got to bring. The Zen um, Vivi. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's their downside. To get the full system and have it be like, Get the full value of the coziness it yeah. is kind of a bulky system yeah for sure but i think the new setup though is it's way less bulky because the quilt is like on par with other ultralight quilts now nice. and the uh, the sheet the ultralight sheet just packs down to pretty much nothing because the it's like a half sheet yeah it's like a half sheet and then it's i want to say it's 900 fill down well that's it, serious it, fill power yeah and the sleeping pad packs so this they, he did a really good job with this it's the, the pillow but then you bring the pillow and it gets, it does get a little, a little bulky. Yeah. I mean, if you already get a pillow, I probably would buy the pillow. Yeah. But, um, sleeping pad, my go-to is, oh, gosh, that's hard. It, it's been the big Agnes sleeping pads, like, the Repeat or the, what's the new orange one? What can I think? The Zoom, yeah, the Zoom, the, that's been a great pad. Uh, I haven't good. used this. Yeah, I have good. used the repeat a lot. Got a ton of, ton of life out of the repeat, and the, some previous Big Agnes pad. I was on, a, I was on the Big Agnes train for a while. Yeah, yeah. The Nebo stuff is really nice too. I really like Nebo. Yeah. Thermal Rest is a solid pad. I just don't think they've nailed the comfort. Yeah. As much as everybody else, like it's like it's just laying on it comfortable. I don't get excited about the Thermarest sleeping pads. I don't either. Yeah. I do really like their, uh, one of their sleeping bags. 
Oh, which one? The uh, the zero degree uh, parsec. Oh. I think the parsec is a really nice thing. Okay. I have gosh, I can't remember the name, but I have one of their super super like the, the almost ultra light sleeping bag you can buy from them. It's a twenty degree bag. Yeah. And the cover rated on it's like thirty two. And it weighs like I mean some stick like twenty ounces for this. Oh. Yeah. And, but it's like really thin. And the you have to lay on your back. Because the installation underneath you is like hardly anything. It's nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's that. That's that's a good bag though. Yeah. I had that bag down to like the low twenties. And uh, I was super warm, even though it's cover rated like 32. Yeah. Yeah. What is a development, like an emerging trend, if you will, that you're excited about with Backpack? Or is there something that you feel like is cool, interesting, or is it all kind of just nothing's really new? It's just um, incremental improvements. I don't know. It's a really good question. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of feel like people are. I kind of feel like sleep systems are kind of the trend of getting yeah. more advanced. So, I don't know. That's a hard one. What do you think? Well, yeah, I think I think pinpointing sleep systems. It does seem like. It's becoming more reasonable or common to have options that aren't just mummy bags. Yeah. Where I feel like mummy bags were like the only thing anybody ever had. Yeah. For 15, the last 15 years. Yeah. And then in the last. I feel like two cottage or three vendors years. are the ones that are leading the way. Yeah. And then I feel like the, the mainstream, the, the big corporate brands are. They know that nobody knows about the contraband, so the sleeping bags will think that sell. So they're still pushing those. But they are all of a sudden you'll you'll be like, oh, Thormarest is making a quilt. Yeah. You know, so I think they're they're figuring it out. Yeah. And uh, so I, I think that's cool. Especially since I just think it's cool that I'm really cottage brands are the they're on the forefront of what's up and coming. I think if you want to look at the next big thing, you should look at a cottage brand. What cottage brand do you think is creating some really interesting innovation? Um, Zen Bibby for sure. And I don't know if he considers it. It's, it's got to be a cottage. I mean, a co- by cottage brand, I mean just like... It's not... Real small company. Yeah. It's not one of the mega... Yeah, Zen Bibby is R-E-I super innovating. Is, yeah. Any company that's working with DCF, tents. Yeah. Um, you know... Z packs, they're all obviously much larger now, but uh, you know, they, you go to their website and they've got every kind of gear you can think of that they're creating. Yep. Outdoor vitals, um, for sure. Um, yeah, I think they all are just innovating and yeah. coming up with new things. I mean, because these are the guys that are out there, they're like, <clears throat> well, I can't find it from the big company. Yeah, I'm going to make it. Yeah. And then it, people are like, oh, yeah, I would wait for this. Yeah. I've, I have been, uh, just generally speaking, impressed with Outdoor Vitals and have, because of you, I actually started trying out more of their product lines and things like that, and I've been quite impressed. With they got good stuff, man. Yeah. When Taysen, when Taysen first started the company, I think he I think he was struggling a little bit on some of the gear, <laughs> you know, making some of the stuff. It was not the best, but yeah, he hired some really good people to help them. And like design products. Yeah, just, yeah so. and they've just really started knocking out of the park with some of their stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know they got really good stuff like that. That new backpack, they got the CS40. It's a nice penny. Yeah. I was yeah. actually just uh, using that in Hawaii. Oh, yeah. Did you and like it? Actually, it was very impressed with it. And in general, like a 40 liter ultralight pack is typically difficult for me to fit what I needed. But I thought that it was very comfortable and uh, really cool. I just, I was impressed. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Bag. Good 
good stuff. So you just got out of the Grand Canyon. Yep. Uh, how was it being back? Since the last time, a year ago, you, were, you took me. Yeah. Or maybe was. I took you. I'm not sure. <laughs> you took me. I took um, you. And uh, you ended up in the hospital. Yeah. Uh, I almost died. I... It was like... I, I've tried to explain this so many times to people, but it's... If you've ever experienced something really tragic, and then you go, you 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 revisit that location of whatever that is, it is. It, it's just it brings everything back. So I had massive anxiety, yeah. just knowing that I was even going to be there, and. I knew the weather was better. I knew I was capable. I knew we'd be fine. I knew all these things, and that, but that didn't matter. So, I, I mean, when I booked the plane tickets, when I when I booked the flights, that's when it became real. Yeah. I had lots of sleepless nights. Yeah. And then when we got to the canyon, I mean, I was just, I, there were moments when I thought I was gonna barf, because <laughs> I just feel so just, um, really? Yeah. That's not strong of a reaction. Oh, man. And then when we were um, hiking out, and I was hiking up, and I got like a mile from the rim, the rim yesterday, uh, and there, everybody was up ahead of me because I was so hyper, like, trying to not have that happen again. Just going the extra, like, paying attention to my body. I'm going to purposefully hike slow. Yeah. I had this, like, emotional experiences break down and I just I just cried I just was stopped at the side of the mountain and I just it all came out of me and when I got to the was it fear was it what was I don't know what was the, why I was doing that yeah no because I I could feel the anxiety going away huh? like I'm gonna do this and wow. I'm gonna beat this place Oh, that's awesome. I'm not going to let this happen again. And I felt like it was like... I, it was it was uh, facing whatever that fear was. Yeah. Head on. And then when I got to the top, it was just... Like, um, I went with Darwin and Emmett. And I, it, 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 it sounds weird, but they, they didn't go to the car in the freezing rain because it was raining and cold. They waited for me. Yeah, outside, like you know, a hundred yards from the car or whatever. And for some reason, that was like that meant everything. Like That's I was, really like, cool. I couldn't believe they waited for me. I, I don't know. It was just I was super emotional. <laughs> yeah, I mean so, that's yeah. that's actually I'm. I think that's really cool that you could that you allowed yourself to tap into that, kind of go through those fears, move through the anxiety, actually come back and work towards getting redemption if you will or just having a, a very different experience yeah uh, with with the great Canley and not letting sort of like the tragedy be your your last your last time no I I it was obviously difficult we I did 10 we had 10 miles out we started at 8 in the morning exactly and we ended at 4 p.m exactly so it was at eight hours yeah, it's eight hours. No one can do that math. Yeah. <laughs> Not a trigonometrist. <laughs> yeah, it's eight hours. And so I felt like that was a that was a pretty reasonable amount of time to do that. And yeah. I was proud of myself. And, yeah, that's good. And uh, so I felt like, I, but I was beat. Obviously, I'm still beat. My legs are just super sore. That's the great key. Yeah, that's the great No matter key. what. And at the top, I'm like, okay, I did it. I'm never coming back again. <laughs> Like that because I hated the place. It was just like, all right, I've done it. I've seen it. This was misery. But I'm sure next week I'm gonna be like, I can't wait to go back. That was awesome. Yeah. So, if I kind of felt like, as Nevik would say, I bested that where I'm can. So. I think that's awesome. I'm really proud of you and happy for you. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. We got some wild weather. We're just like coming yeah, in and out of this like crazy clouds. 
It's really pretty. Yeah. It's really pretty. Yeah. yeah. You like coming to Arizona with like there's you make me drive in like crazy weather. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the plan. Oh yeah. The last time I was here was just like that winter snowstorm. That yeah. crazy winter snowstorm on the way to the airport. Yeah. But I don't know, man. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I'm done. So does that mean you're never gonna come back here? It's the last time you're out in Arizona. Yes. So that means I have to go to Wisconsin to ever see you. Yes. Nobody ever comes to Wisconsin to see me. I'm always like, hey, who wants to come backpacking? It's hey, crickets. bro, I drove through Wisconsin and we went camping last week. Oh, yeah, yeah. Summer. You are the only one. <laughs> this is true. You did. That's right. It was glorious. Yeah, yeah. We were at Wally World. Yeah, Jellystone. Jellystone. <laughs> we, were, we, we were, my family was uh, RV camping at the, like, at the Wisconsin camping. It was, was you stop by nothing finer. Oh, it was awesome. Yep, best campsite, hot yeah. dogs. So if you're a YouTuber out there, backpacking YouTuber, uh, <laughs> I always want people to come to me and nobody ever does, so. I always gotta come out west. Where there's a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, that's fine. So, yeah. Well, oh, great boat. It's great. Oh, maybe. Okay, so it sounds like the Grand Canyon was a fairly cathartic, redemptive experience. Oh, yeah. Yes. Very. Very, what, very, very. What? Okay, so maybe it's the Grand Canyon, but what trip in the last year or two stands out as top of the list for, like, positive experiences? Um, that's going to be 100% when I go with uh, my buddies from back home that I've known for years and years and years and years, and I don't film it. Oh. Uh, yep, it's a, we go once a year somewhere, and usually it's someplace that big. Yeah. And uh, that this year we went to uh, Wyoming. We went to the we went to the Tico Basin. Oh. And uh, that's awesome. Yeah, and it's just it is I don't. It's the place is obviously great. I love backpacking trips because of the company. Yeah. I love spending time enjoying what I love with other people that love that as well. Yeah. You're not a solo guy. I'm not a solo guy. I I don't desire to go solo. I could care less if I ever go solo. I'm not afraid to go solo. I just find it like to me that's like going on vacation by yourself. To me. Like like I'm gonna go stay in a I'm in a resort with just me. You, you should know. try it sometime. No, I should not. Someday you and I are going to go on a solo together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> you and I are going to go solo. Uh, yeah. We'll so. just each go separate trails. Yeah. <laughs> See you in three days. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I just, are you, you're a solo guy. You like going solo. I, I do like going on solo trips. I really like it actually quite a lot. I like, I love backpacking with people. I love both. Yeah. I love sharing it with other people. I've really loved backpacking with my wife and introducing her to backpacking. And she has really started enjoying it a lot over the last couple of years. Uh, but yeah, I still love a trip where it's, I just go by myself and be quiet in the mountains. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I should do, I know people are gonna comment. Just do it. You'd love it. I probably should. Just try it once. Just to say I did it. Yeah. But I just... I don't want to say it. I don't care if I said to say I did it. I just don't... I would desire to do it. I don't know. I just love being with people. Yeah. I'm not a... I, I am an extremely social person. So I have to have community. You just really want somebody to hear your jokes. That's right. <laughs> otherwise, yes. who's there to laugh? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I won't push you into it, but if you ever do decide to do it, I think you'll find to be you'll find it to be a more positive experience than you were expecting. You said I've been told. Yeah. Many times people keep telling me that. I don't know. Well, give it up. Give it up. You can, you can do your thing. I don't know. Maybe I'll do one next year. 
just to say I did it. Just to shut people up. To shut everybody up. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'll bring him in with me. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the true what's, solo. What's the top of your list for backpacking trips this past year? This past year? Uh, there were two. There were two that I did that were really special to me. Uh, I did part of the Colorado Trail. I went from Durango to Bolas Pass, which is 75 miles. Did that so all. Yeah. That one was awesome. I did it right after I had quit my job and went solo, went to like independent and business. So I just had like a lot of stuff going on in life and just, so that was like cool going, going out there and just being able to kind of do that thing where you just go be alone with your thoughts in the mountains. And I, it was beautiful. So many like crazy monsoon storms were up in the mountains that time of year. And yeah. I loved it, but also Probably the trail that I found to be the most interesting and unique and kind of different for me was actually the Tour de Mont Blanc, oh, which wow. is a 105 mile trail that goes around the Mont Blanc Massive, which is in Italy and France. And you actually go through three countries on this loop. When did you do that? In September. And it was amazing. What we got only with you? You don't know me? Bro, did, I I think I sent you my video. You said, oh, I'll oh, sure, I'll sit down and watch it. The yeah, I believe it. <laughs> Fair enough. No, but just, it's a really cool experience because it is backpacking, but you also get to, like, go to these, like, cafes and oh, bakeries yes, all, all along yes, the way. That, yeah, I know. Yeah, I did know you did that. Yeah, that was awesome. You were, like, case testing stuff. With pizzas everything. on the trail in oh, Italy. Yeah. And, get good espresso coffee in the morning. It was, oh. it was did, such what, a cool... Did you do that on, on your own? I did it with a buddy of mine. I mean, was just like, like hey, let's go to Italy and backpack. So we were actually filming the fi- my final episode of Epic Trails. Okay. So, this and so we were already in Switzerland. And afterwards, I was like, hey, you want to stick around? And for like eight days, we'll go hike this 105 mile trail and he was like let's do it so we were already there we just took some like extra days and uh went did it was it a tough trail it's a the most elevation gain of loss of any trail i think i've ever done oh wow you're just constantly going up or down i think it's something crazy like in 105 miles you do like 45,000 feet of elevation gain of loss it's like bonkers you're just Go up the mountain, go down the mountain, go up. <laughs> it's so it's it's challenging, but uh, but I would do like twenty. I was doing like twenty mile days, twenty two mile days out there. So I was also like typically for me, I I was doing bigger mileage than I normally do, and I was really it was really fun. Were you beat? I was beat. I got actually quite sick in the middle of the trip. And uh, we had to take a day where we just didn't move at all because I actually got pretty ill. I think I drank some bad water. Ouch. Or something like that. But so, uh, how was that grill right now? <laughs> well, it's because I didn't use it. What would you use? Nothing. What there, you nothing? There's like all these like water taps that are like community taps that are supposedly safe drinking water. Oh, okay. And you could just like fill up your, you could just like fill up and drink it. Oh. Uh, but there was like a reported outbreak and I didn't know about it. And uh, apparently the water was actually not safe to drink. Oh, where I, so I should have been using my filtration and I just didn't. Oh, yeah. Because oh. it was like supposedly like, oh, everybody drinks from this water. This is communal safe drinking water that we have. But it turns out it wasn't. Ouch. Yeah. That's still one of your top trips. Even with... I wasn't you know, like super sick. I basically got knocked on my butt for a day, and then was back to like it. But... So it passed quickly. No pun intended. <laughs> passed quickly and violently. <laughs> so man. that's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we're uh, almost near. We're here, so hey, let's uh, let's uh, 
You can ramp it up. So right you here. want me to just drop you off right here? Yeah. That was good. Okay. Right. The cactus. We ate a few. Pick up spikes to go poke somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks, man. Hey, we had to talk about something on the drive down here. Yeah, we had to talk about something. Might as well chat about. Emmett, gear. thanks for your contributions for the back seat. Yeah. Emmett, you were really had a lot to say. Yeah, you were, brought a lot a, to the conversation. Yes. Very, a lot of depth. Uh, yeah. Depth. Yeah. Middle yeah. kind of last. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope that was interesting to you, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Gonna start with the TikTok dance. Yeah. Oh, let's not start with that. <laughs> we just gave it to him, though. <laughs> <laughs>